Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are releasing, like the Lord have commanded us, we are releasing the Hushites and the Esthers. We are activating. You know, I'm just using the two words, releasing and activating. Actually, when you are done activating, you release. Praise God. Now, that's what's going on in this season. Not only in our nation, also in your life. Hallelujah. You know, yesterday I told you something. I said, David knew he was going through a season of judgment of a wrong that he had done. Now, you remember what he did uh, when, when uh, he took Bathsheba and then he, he killed Uriah and took his wife. Now, God, the prophet, came to him and said, Hey, because of this thing that you have done, uh, there's a fire in your house. And the prophet told him exactly what was going to happen. And so when that season came, David somehow knew how to navigate that judgment because he trusted completely in the Lord. David didn't resist when Absalom was coming to take the throne because God had spoken about it. He didn't resist. But then he also never gave up his truth. You see, I, I, I shared something with you about faith, the kind of faith Abraham had, the kind of faith, uh, uh, I think that was when we were talking about maybe First Corinthians or something. Because I remember talking about marriage, and I remember saying that some of you, you need to get to that point where you let your marriage die, that it may live. Now, you are not giving up on your marriage, but you get to that point to let, you know, that what you're struggling to hold, you get to that point where you have to let it go. If it is dying, let it die. Why would you do that? Because you believe in the Lord that commanded you into that marriage. The same thing with your business. The same thing with everything that you do. See? So David got to that point where he knew God spoke to him about this truth. He knew he was in the right place. He knew he was supposed to be the king. But you see, he never used his hand to fight to get it. Neither did he fight to preserve it. So imagine you knowing the word of the Lord that you are the king. God put you there. And, and someone is coming against you. Your own son is coming against you. You would want to reason, no, nobody can take me out of my inheritance. But David said, you know what, guys, let's not fight. Gather your stuff and go. And now David met Hushai came to David, Hushai was David's friend. That, shit, that was what we were talking about yesterday. And David said, no, Hushai, go back and submit to Absalom. And my, my, my instruction to you is that you go there and defeat the counsel of Ahithophel for me. Now, that was after David asked the Lord. He says, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. The prayer didn't stop at praying. Now, I want you to get something here now. We're looking in, in, in first, Second Samuel chapter 15. And, <clears throat> and verse 34. Now, verse 34 says, David talking to Husha, Husha. He says, but if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant hitherto. So will I now also be thy servant? Then he says, Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. So David said, I'm sending you back to Absalom. And your job in that place is to go and defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. All right. So now let's go to the next chapter. Chapter 16, Second Samuel chapter 16. And, and we're reading from verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. And it came to pass when Hushai the archer, David's friend, see what called him? David's friend. Hushai the servant, David's friend, was come unto Absalom. That Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king. God save the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? So Absalom knew that Hushai was his father's friend. See, he knew. All right, so 
Why wentest thou not with thy friend? <laughs> now look at what Hushai said. See, Hushites are people that are full of wisdom. Watch this now. And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and these people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. Now that's the right thing to say to a king. <laughs> Yeah, that's the right thing to say to a king. Watch this now. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in thy father's presence, so will I, will I be in thy presence. Wonderful. I mean, who shall choose the right words to save himself? Because if Absalom have sensed, any foul play, he would have been a dead man. Now, secondly, I want you to notice something about Hushai. He didn't go about mounting David. Because sometimes, see, we, you know, ah, we, we, we feel we want to do righteousness and we end up doing unrighteousness in trying to do righteousness. You see, Hushai would have become of Azilius. Say, mm -hmm, your father, <laughs> I was not really his friend, though. I was just deceiving him. Ah, I was just deceiving him. I know he was not a good man. It was just, you know, just that God just made him king. But he, he, he would have done all that. That some people become overzealous in, in trying to play psychophancy. And yes, they are there to spy for David, but then they overdo it. See, you must, you must be careful with your words. I'm speaking to everyone because as we begin to speak now, you will begin to identify yourself if you are a Hushai. You see? So, so he, he didn't bow mouth his master. He was careful to pick his words. He said, look, I'm going to be on the side of the one who's the king and the one whom the people have chosen. That's what he said. You are now the king. I'll be on the side of the king. And secondly, I mean, you are now the king, the son of my friend. So is it not better I serve you? Because the person I was serving before, he is no longer king. Right now, you are the king. So I, I submit to you. I'm loyal to you. Mm. Okay, good. So Absalom thought. Now look at what happened next. Thank you, Jesus. And then said Absalom to Ahitophel, Give me counsel among you. Watch. Give me counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahitophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubine, which he had left to keep the house. And all Israel shall hear that thou art abhor of thy father. Then shall the hand of all that are with thee be strong. Did you see that? Now you remember prophet God came to David and said, Look, this is what's going to happen to you. One of your children from your own house, you know, speaking about the judgment that was going to come on him, and told him that, look, he is good. Now the, 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 the prophet actually said that he is going to sleep with your wives in the presence of all of Israel. Now I want you to see how prophecies come to pass. Now Absalom had driven his father out of the throne. And now he's the king. But when David was leaving, I believe that must have been by the wisdom of the Lord. He took all his wives and deliberately left some of his concubines. Now, he, why didn't he take every one of them? Because he was mindful of what God had said. And the Spirit of God was guiding him through judgment. Because the things that the Lord has said must come to pass. Are you following me? So when he was leaving, I'm sure the Lord must have like, David, leave this one. Leave this one. Leave this one. He said, mm -hmm. okay. And then he left them. Now Absalom was king. And then he, he wasn't thinking about it. See how judgment works. He wasn't thinking about it. And then suddenly he calls Ahitophel. He says, hey, 
come give me counsel okay now how do we establish our reign how do we how do we solidify ourselves on the throne and I too said this is what I'm going to advise you to do get your father's concubines that he left and sleep with them for all Israel to see when they see that they will now really know that you're not just your father's son you know you've taken over your father's throne and then you're just going to do this thing you know because see no matter how good you are as a leader there are certain part of the people or a group or not just a group there are people who will not just like you they will not like your way of ruling they will not like your policies it's you can't help it it's just going to, so now yes absalom is king there are people who are like yeah and there are people who are still skeptical and he's still the man's son now so Absalom was telling him that if you do this, they will realize that, ah, this guy, he really hates his father. I think he's, not, he's going to take us in a different direction from his father. Now, that was the wisdom that came to Ahitophel. But also, that was to fulfill the prophecy that had been spoken. Even in the fulfillment of that prophecy, mercy was displayed. But that's not what we're talking about today. That's another day's to praise God. <laughs> You know, so Ahitophel gave him this counsel. Now, look at what happened. Verse 22. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. And Absalom went in unto his father's concubine in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahitophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahitophel, both with David and with Absalom. Did you see that? I told you this earlier. When Ahitophel speaks, it's as though he just finished having a meeting with the Lord. <laughs> and he's telling you what God told him. He said that's how he was with David. Now that's why David, the moment he heard, that Ahitophel is now with Absalom. He said, whoa! He said, Lord, turn his counsel to foolishness. Now, Ahitophel gave his first counsel. And Absalom accepted it as good. And he did it. Now, look at what happened next. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 17 now. And verse 1. Now, I don't know how. Maybe we should just leave it off here and start from chapter 17 tomorrow. Praise God. Listen. Listen. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. There are certain times in your life you feel people who you trust, the people who you have told lots of secrets, they have suddenly abandoned you and they are now with someone else. Now, this happens in politics. This happens in in governance, in, in business. It happens everywhere. Don't be anxious. You pray the same prayer like David. Say, Lord, turn the counsel, no matter how those people are. It's sometimes you're even scared that they might blackmail you with the informations they have. Now, information you personally told them or they personally experienced. Now, as long as you, you, you are submitted to the Lord, you need to understand God. That's why I remember I shared with you about the old prophet and the young prophet. I told you, I told you something about the young prophet. He couldn't forgive himself to walk in God's mercy. That's why he died, not because God killed him. If he had accepted God's mercy, even after he had done wrong, God would have sought a way to save him. So even if you have done wrong, hear me, the question is, where are you today? Are you wallowing in that wrong? Or are you submitting yourself that God will show you mercy? If you submit yourself for God to show you mercy, I mean submitting yourself, not just, Father, have mercy on me true repentance and then submit yourself the wisdom of god is going to come to you and he will help you go through that challenge and you will come out still victorious i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye bye